Today we are on our way to Asakusa, a popular history rich district located in Taito wards of Tokyo. On our way there, Jason helped out an old lady who had a hard time carrying her shopping cart up the stairs. Come to think of it, you can really see the population aging. Jason said the ratio of elderly is increasing compared to last time he was here. Many visitors to Asakusa enjoy exploring the area while wearing traditional Japanese clothing such as yukata. You can find a lot of rental shops when you get off the station. You can also find traditional rickshaw rides as you get closer to the Kaminari Gate. Kaminari Mon means Thunder Gate and it has a massive lantern at the front. Looks like it's starting to rain a bit. Everyone was taking their picture by the front gate, so we took some too. Once you enter, you can stroll down the Nakamise Dori, which takes you to the Sensoji Temple. It was pretty crowded and hot. Jason found a pretty sweet spot that has Wagyu Sukiyaki, but there were no options to book ahead of time, so we're really hoping that we can still eat there. This place is called Imana NX, but they were completely full for the whole day. I've been really annoyed that a lot of places in Japan have waiting lines or require reservations ahead of time. There are two problems with the reservation system in Japan. Most Japanese restaurants don't have a website or an online reservation system. Even those that do generally require a Japanese phone number and they do often reject reservations from foreigners. Luckily, Jason has a backup plan that also serves Wagyu Sukiyaki called Imanan Honten. Oh no, looks like they're also close to the public for a private company event. I'm bummed out that I can't have any sukiyaki, but we were getting hungry so we picked another restaurant that was close by. This place is self-serve. You can order from the iPad and pick up your tray when your number gets called at the counter. This furikake was so good, I couldn't stop adding it to my rice. Once done, we returned the tray and we went to pay at the machine. We are about to approach the second gate called the Hosomon, which is the inner gate of Sensoji Temple. It is one of the main gates that leads to the temple's main hall. The gate is flanked by two impressive statues known as the Neo Guardians. These fierce looking statues are considered protectors of the Buddha's teachings. There is also a five story pagoda that stands at the height of approximately 53 meters, and the numbers of stories can represent different aspects of the Buddha's teaching. It typically symbolizes the five elements of earth water, fire, wind, and space. The original pagoda burned down, so the one that you see here is a reconstruction of it from 1973. This place is huge, with vendors everywhere. You can find all sorts of souvenirs, snacks, and restaurants. I did notice that a lot of places were selling the same type of snacks for a higher price than others, so make sure you look around a bit before buying anything. Everything looks so delicious. What should I get? Hmm, hard to decide. 
I ended up getting the strawberry tang hulu because it's trendy and it actually tasted sweeter than the one I had at the night market in Taiwan. We also got some sweet dango because they look so pretty. Now we are on our way to Shibuya. I didn't see it, but apparently Jason said we passed by the Hachiko statue, which pays tribute to the loyal Akita dog named Hachiko. The story of Hachiko's loyalty is well known in Japan's culture. Apparently, Shibuya Station is one of the busiest stations in Japan. Ah, uh, it's starting to rain! We are crossing one of the most famous intersections in the world. Shibuya Crossing is known for its massive pedestrian scramble. Thousands of people cross the street simultaneously, creating a mesmerizing sight. We wanted to escape the rain, so we went to Starbucks. But turns out everyone is trying to do the same. I think this is a famous lookout spot for Shibuya Crossing. Everyone is trying to take a picture or film this view. Time to try the dongo we bought in Asakusa. Everything was actually so delicious. My favorite would be the blue one. It tasted like cream soda. I hope the rain will stop soon because we paid extra for the rooftop lounge with champagne to view the sunset at Shibuya Sky. We paid around $50 per person and Jason stayed up to actually book this as soon as it was available for purchase online. The regular tickets gets you to the entrance to Shibuya Sky for $20, but no rooftop lounge access. Ah, uh, what? Are you kidding me? They're closed? No, I came all the way to Japan for this experience. We went to ask the front desk what our options were and they said that we can have access to the regular experience without a refund. Jason was pretty furious because we paid $50, but the regular fee is $20. They wouldn't even offer us a refund for the difference. The other option was a full refund, but that would mean that we wouldn't be able to go since the regular tickets for that day were sold out. Crazy, right? If we took the first option, we would be scamming ourselves out of $30. So we went for the full refund, which was actually quite a complicated process. Apparently, you need to show them your purchase receipt on your WebKit account, and if you don't have a WebKit account, you can't get a refund at all. Wow, look at that! The sun is setting and it stopped raining! Wow, Shibuya is even more lively at night than during the day. Did you know that omakase prices in Japan have skyrocketed? The average cost is $300 per person. 
it's probably a combination of more tourists and inflation. Luckily, Jason did some in-depth research and discovered a hidden gem in Shibuya. It's a local spot that not many people know about, and the prices were reasonable at $120 per person. The restaurant only has 4 seats, and they offer just 3 time slots a day. I absolutely love this experience, every piece of sushi blew my mind. The theme was a trip around the world and each piece was inspired by a different country. Each guest had to pick a cocktail cup for their Dibana cocktail. Instead of the usual ginger as our palate cleanser, we had to pick a smaller cup for our Gari cocktail which replaced the traditional ginger accompaniment between each sushi serving. One. I think there's a lot of history, right? Behind this cup? I like this one. It's super shiny. I'm gonna be rich someday. <laughs> I love how the chef used her creativity and wasn't afraid to challenge our taste bud. Any high-end sushi chef can put yellow tail on some rice, but she had new approach to a familiar flavor. The chef was incredibly friendly, spoke English very well, and she made an effort to get to know her customers and explain each piece in a fun way. I particularly enjoyed guessing which country inspired each piece before taking a bite. Well, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in Kyoto.